Most Europeans are familiar with the idea of a CCTV system. Traditional CCTV features cameras in public places or in shops, and the cameras are linked to a control room where security staff watch the screens for anything unusual. Smart CCTV uses digital cameras which are linked to a computer system as well as a control room. The system can analyse the images captured by the cameras and alert the security staff if something unusual seems to be happening. Depending on how it's set up, a smart CCTV system can be programmed to identify certain objects. Technical developers are now working on ways to get it to understand people's behaviour. So red it's just an anomaly behaviour and then you have the green just I think it thinks is normal. So. We asked a range of experts for their opinions on both the benefits and the limitations of smart CCTV. These days of austerity, technology is kind of useful to manage the risks at a reduced cost. Well clearly there's a security use and if you're trying to monitor for particular types and to particular groups of people, then smart CCTV gives you an intelligent way of being alerted when those people are in a certain area. So that we can understand whether we've seen this person before, where they've been, where they're going, and maybe something more about the gestures and their behaviour so that we can understand a little more about their intentions. Extremists will always be out there. I'm not saying that smart CCTV will stop that from occurring, but what it does do is it allows those people that are looking after the safety of those spaces that we use a better chance of spotting the discarded package, even odd behaviour that might be construed as a reconnaissance activity before an attack takes place. The unfortunate thing about technology is that it works very well in very specific circumstances and doesn't work well in all circumstances. Smart CCTV may identify some characteristics in some environments, but then you add a bit of sunlight to that environment or people of a different complexion show up, things start getting a little crazy. Blanket surveillance has very little deterrent effect. It does increase the fear of the public because they feel under surveillance and they wonder, well, if there are security cameras, does that mean I'm actually at risk? Whenever a camera system is installed, there is a notice board that goes up that tells you who is managing that. I do worry sometimes that we don't take that terribly seriously, and I think citizens should be entitled to contact the manager to say just what is that camera system doing. The police are obliged to install the camera in such a way that they do not film, for example, into private homes. Maybe we need a common understanding of what privacy is and what that entails to identify where one person's privacy starts and another person's privacy ends. I do believe that we need to empower our lawful authorities to act, but they must be held to account. And there are limitations to the way they may act. That's what we call the rule of law. And we need a parliament that will pay close attention to this. We need a media that will pay close attention to this and will not just say, oh, but we must trust our police. Oh, we must trust our security agencies. It's perhaps trust, perhaps, but we need a hell of a lot more verification. Well, we need to have a public debate, which is about why our cameras used, why is smart CCTV now the growing tool of choice for law enforcement and local government across Europe? If you are working in a jurisdiction where you didn't have some fairly well-developed legal frameworks that protect people's data, this information could be misused. People who say that they've done nothing wrong, so surveillance doesn't worry them, need to remember who is it that's deciding what's being looked for. So it might be the police and they're looking for a, a potential robber. Equally, it could be a company whose job it is to find out who's having too long a lunch break or who's visiting a certain medical service. How long do images get stored for? 
And what are the qualifications of the individuals that actually look after that system? All of this is well understood and recorded in parts of the EU, and that's good news. But I think that sort of transparency can only do good in terms of building up confidence with the citizens. They've got to feel that the camera's there for a good reason, and it's actually helping them and not actually interfering with what they want to do. Security technologies can have a benefit, but one must always consider the circumstances and the reasons why they should be deployed. You need to consider how much do they cost, are they effective from the technical view, what side effects do they have, for example for data protection or human rights issues. Also a simply practical question, does this technology solve the problem or not? And do we have alternatives at hand that may also do the work?